Hey there, my name is Path, and in this video I want to discuss why the most famous equation in all of physics, and potentially in the whole world, is actually incomplete. The equation I'm talking about is, of course, E is equal to mc squared. We'll be understanding what it says, and why it's not giving us the full picture. So if you enjoy this video, then please hit the thumbs up button, and subscribe for more fun physics content. Let's get into it. So first of all, what does E is equal to mc squared actually mean? Well, it relates the mass an object has, the amount of physical stuff that it's made out of, to the absolute maximum amount of energy that could be obtained from it if we were able to completely access it. The quantity c just refers to the speed of light within a vacuum, which is the fastest speed at which any object can move within our universe. Now, in this equation, c is basically acting as a constant of proportionality. What I mean by this is that it is just used to link together how much energy we can get from an object with a particular mass. The fact that it's a speed, at least for our purposes, doesn't mean too much, aside from the fact that it gives the correct units. What this equation is saying, then, is that in principle, if we take any object, let's say this one, we could get this amount of energy from it if we were able to completely convert all of its mass into energy. Afterwards, there'll be no object left at all, its mass will be zero, and the energy will have been transferred to the stuff around it in one form or another. By the way, for more information on what energy actually is, and what physicists actually mean when they say energy, check out this video up here. Now, here's the thing. This equation is wonderful in many different ways. But when we first learn about it, whether that's in a physics classroom or through the popular media, we don't always hear about the situations in which this equation works and the ones in which it doesn't work. This equation is only true when we are studying an object that is stationary at rest relative to us. In other words, when the object is not moving. And if we don't know this, we can start using E is equal to mc squared to calculate the total energy of our object in scenarios when the equation isn't correct. This equation is only telling us part of the story. So what does a more accurate version look like? Well, it looks like this. E squared is equal to mc squared whole squared plus pc all squared. Now this seems like much more of a handful, and we can clearly see why this version, e is equal to mc squared, became a lot more popular than this one, right? Both because e is equal to mc squared is easier to say and remember, and because it's technically correct in many scenarios that we do study, when objects don't move relative to us. But this full equation applies much more generally across many more situations. But first, it's worth mentioning what p is, since we haven't seen it yet. P represents the momentum of the object. Let's recall that we're taught that an object has momentum if it's moving. In high school physics, we learned that an object's momentum is given by multiplying its mass by its velocity. So we can see how, via momentum, this equation accounts for the energy an object has if it's moving. And this makes a fair amount of sense. If the object is moving, it must have more energy than it did before when it wasn't moving. Because the object must have had the energy it had before, and then the energy it gains by moving, right? And here's a rather interesting thing. If we take this equation and consider how it looks for objects moving relatively slowly, meaning much less than the speed of light, we can see that it has lots of complicated terms in it. We won't go into the maths here, but I'll leave some resources below if you want to find out more about it. But the point is that for small velocities, this fraction v divided by c is relatively small. It's certainly less than one. And therefore this fraction squared is even smaller, cubed is smaller still, and so on. Basically, these terms have a tiny numerical value compared to these terms when we can calculate them. And for now, we can ignore the impact that they have on the energy of the object. So what are we left with? Well, we're left with the mc squared energy, that's the energy it had when the object was at rest, and this amount of energy which rather familiarly looks like the kinetic energy equation. This is supposedly the energy our object gains when it's moving. Well, technically the energy it gains is all of these terms, but the biggest contributor to these terms is this one here, which is what we are taught early on in our physics journey is the kinetic energy of a moving object. Well, according to the equations of relativity, a moving object also gains these smaller terms worth of energy due to its motion, but anyway, we won't talk about those here. 
So we've seen this full equation and how it applies to moving objects rather than just stationary ones. But wait, there's more. Remember, we've only considered objects that actually have mass so far. What about massless objects, like photons of light? After all, they do transfer energy from one place to another, so how much energy do they actually have? Well, this equation tells us that the energy of a massless photon is equal to this. If it's massless, then m is equal to zero and this term disappears, and we're left with just pc. But wait, isn't p the momentum of our object? And isn't momentum defined as the mass of the object multiplied by its velocity? So shouldn't this term be zero as well? What's going on here? Ah, well, this is where we discover another one of the slightly incorrect things we're taught in the first few kilometers of our physics journey. It turns out that momentum is only defined as mv for objects that actually have mass. In actuality, momentum is a conserved quantity that behaves very consistently when objects, particles, interact with each other. What we mean by this is that in any isolated system that we're studying, the total momentum does not change. Objects transfer momentum to one another, but it's never created or destroyed within the system. In some cases, momentum is lost to or gained from the surroundings. But if we account for those, then this is no longer an isolated system. And if we put those parts as part of our system, then it's isolated once again, and momentum is a conserved quantity once again. And even massless objects like photons can carry momentum because when they interact with other objects that have mass, this momentum can be passed on to the object that absorbs a photon, for example. And all of this behaves in a very predictable and measurable way. So it's not just a fudge to make sure our momentum is a conserved quantity. The fact of the matter is that the momentum of a photon is directly related to its frequency, or more specifically, the frequency of light emitted from the light source. We can calculate this momentum and also measure changes in momentum due to photons interacting with other objects. This is closely related to a concept known as radiation pressure, where light can exert pressure on objects due to a change in momentum when the light collides with the object. But that deserves a video of its own. Coming back to our equation then, we see that it successfully describes stationary objects with mass, moving objects with mass, and even massless objects like photons. And the simplified version, E is equal to mc squared, though brilliant and easy to remember, only really applies to stationary objects. And with all of that being said, I'm going to finish up here. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe for more fun physics content. Hit that bell button for notifications and check out my merch linked down below. It features a famous quote from Albert Einstein. Lastly, a big thanks to all of my Giga patrons and all the others over on my Patreon page. That's linked down below as well if you'd like to support me on there. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon.